Thanks, guys. Um, migrations. I, I remember 10 years ago when I was working in search, and migration was a really rare thing, but now every meeting I seem to go to, they're talking about migrations. And, and there are three things I really want to do today on the subject of migrations. And the first is to dispel the migratory myth, that myth that suggests if you're going through a big platform migration, um, it's all going to go horribly wrong. You're going to lose traffic, you're going to lose visibility, and you're going to lose revenue. And while we're on the subject of dispelling myths, I really want to dispel that myth that you can actually build a website, a new website that you're going to migrate to, and you can take it along, and just before it goes out the door, you can give it to the SEO team, because they've got magic SEO dust, and they can just sprinkle that on it before it goes out of the door. But again, that's a myth, and that just doesn't happen. Secondly, on the way to dispelling those myths, I'm going to show you lots and lots of examples of my migrations, some really good ones, and some absolute shockers, some horror stories. And then thirdly, and most importantly, what I'm going to do is give you some tips, the five key things that you need to do to make your migration a fantastic success. And those are going to come in the second part of the presentation. So what do we mean by migrations? Well, there's loads of different types of migration. You can get hosting migrations, architecture migrations, platform migrations, domain to domain, subdomain to subfolder, non-secure to secure. These are all different types, and there are many, many more. But the same rules still apply. The rules and the things that I'm going to show you today will apply to each and every one of those. And if you get one of those wrong, or you forget about it, then you're in line for a potential disaster. Migrations are wonderful things, but I have to warn you, they are potentially hazardous. One of the most dangerous online marketing adventures. And I use the word adventure on purpose because we go on adventures because we want to be in a better place. When you migrate your website, why do you migrate it? Because you want your customers to be in a better place. You want your website to work better, to get more traffic, to have better visibility. You want people to come to your site, to stay on it, to discover new things, and of course to generate revenue. Which makes me wonder why sometimes SEO is left right till the very end when it's far too late. And I promised you lots of examples. And if you've seen me talk before, you might be expecting me to name and shame a few people who've got migrations wrong. And there may be some people in the room who've got migrations wrong recently, but today I'm not naming and shaming anybody. But all of these charts that I'm going to show you relate to big, multi-billion pound businesses who have either succeeded and come out the other side in a better place, or it's gone horribly, horribly wrong. Okay, so these are all businesses. I'll give you a few tips, and I might... Um, uh, give you a few Easter eggs on the way and give you some clues. But if you want to find out who these people are in a the chart, then come and find me afterwards and I'll, I'll share that with you. So here's the first one. An absolute horror. Can you imagine? First of January, right there, waking up with a horrific hangover. And I'm sure there's a few hangovers in the audience today. But waking up, not only is your head pounding, but you get a report through, and it looks like that. That's your visibility. That happened to a multi-billion pound global business when they went through a platform migration, because they didn't follow everything that you're going to see in here. And sometimes it's as simple as just a little mistake that leads to another and another and another. So what happened here? Well, they had fantastic visibility on the left-hand side of the chart. Position one, two, three, four, and five for huge traffic driving terms. And then when they migrated, somebody did something wrong, pulled a plug out, and they lost everything. Here's another one. And this time, and I'm sure some of you will be able to guess this, this is another absolute shocker. This one comes from the banking sector. Okay, and look at those terms there. Great big money terms, if you like. 
business startup loans, business loan, business loans, uh, plural, unsecured, etc. Small business loans. These are really big, expensive terms. And as you can see, back in September 2015, they were doing pretty well. They had some good visibility. And then around the 16th of October, everything fell off. But to be fair, this was actually a TLD migration, top level domain migration. So they went from one domain to another. So you would expect to see these positions drop. What you wouldn't expect to see are those lurking positions still in the SERPs days and weeks afterwards. So something tells me there's something going wrong here with this high street bank. But it's a TLD migration. So, so what do you expect to see in a TLD migration? Well, we expect to see one domain here, everything drops, and then, assuming they do it right, follow the rules, the authority, okay, and the visibility to transfer across to the new domain. So let's take a look at the new domain. And there we have it. It looks a little thin on the top, on page one there, positions one to ten. Can you see that? Did it go well? Well, the overall outcome, let's go through the migratory window that I'm going to talk about in a short while and give them 15 days and see how well they're doing. Overall, overall, good button, okay, a 28% loss in visibility and a substantial loss in revenue. Okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. That was 15 days. Let's move forward in time, 75 days. And you'd think by now things would have got better. 75 days, you've got a 35% visibility loss. And also, you know, behind that, behind that loss of visibility, almost certainly a loss of revenue as well. So what does this look like when we, when we visualise it? And to visualise it... I'm going to use a visibility index where I'm going to give them a score out of 100 for all the terms that they position for. Position one page, one you, you score 100, and that score degrades on a curve like that. So here's the original TLD for this bank. And you can see around 17th of October, they dropped out. But there was still some residual visibility, which, you know, I think is a little suspicious. There's something, something afoot here. Let's overlay the new domain on top. And there's the new domain. And you can see they never really recovered. They never really recovered from that. So something went horribly wrong for these guys. And you know what? It's situations like this. This is where the rumours start. And I'm sure you've all heard of the old migratory myth that's going around. And I hear it week in, week out. And it kind of goes something like this. And so just imagine for a second, I'm working in search and I'm the head of search. Um, I've been working for six months in my new position. The boss calls me in. He says, John, we've got a great opportunity for you. We're going to migrate the website. We're going to a new platform. We're going to rejig the architecture. And you're going to have a wonderful new site. And you're in charge. I think, well, fan fantastic. So I'm naturally an optimist. And I always assume everything's going to be better. So I think, absolutely fantastic. And I start getting excited, because I'm in charge. I know my Christmas bonus is going to depend on this. And I think if I do really well, of course we should do some migration. Then I get a huge bonus, and instead of going um, skiing at Hemel Hempstead, nothing wrong with that at Christmas, we're going to go to Chamonix. I'm going to take my son Charlie, we're going to go to Chamonix or somewhere really exciting. Okay, because he's been on me for years. So, I go down to the pub afterwards, and I'm talking to a bunch of people like you guys. We've got search people, we've got techies, we've got geeks, we've got marketing people, and I tell them all about my planned ski trip and snowboarding and how it's going to be really exciting. And you know what they do? They immediately turn into electricians and plumbers and they all start going, oh, I hope you've told them. I said, told them what? Said, You're going to lose traffic. You do on every migration. You're going to lose traffic. You've got to tell them that. But I've already told them it's going to be brilliant. So then I go home all depressed, not my usual self. My son opens the door. He says, what's up, Dad? And I said, well, the guys down the pub say, we're going through a migration. We're going to lose a bunch of traffic. So he says, I don't listen to those fools. Go to Google. And this is what I do. I go to Google and I type in how much traffic could we lose when we migrate our website. And this is what Google says. It changes it to how much traffic would we lose. Even Google knows I'm absolutely stuffed. And the first... The first site, so now I am sweating. Hemel Hempstead is getting closer. Shaman is right over there. Sorry, buddy. Um, I'm going to lose 
It could die 60 to 70 percent, and it depends. So, you know, this is awful. So now I'm expecting it to be an absolutely terrible situation. I'm expecting pushback. I'm expecting people to leave um, uh, 301 redirects, etc., to the last minute. But you know what? It doesn't have to be that way because this is a great opportunity and migrations can be absolutely wonderful things. A time to assess what's going on wrong with your website now, to look at a competition and to make this world a better place. So here are five key things. And I thought long and hard about these key things. And there are loads of lists on the internet. And I don't, I don't just want to repeat those things. So what I'm doing is I'm using examples from the real world, things I've seen go wrong, things I've seen go right as well. But those five key things are as follows. Number one, you absolutely have to involve SEO right at the start. SEO people, you guys out there, you don't have magic powers. I'm sure some of you thought you did last night from what I've seen on Twitter, but, but you don't have magic powers. You can't sprinkle it on the site before it goes out the door. Secondly, redirects and mapping. And I shouldn't even have to talk about redirects and mapping, but time and time and time again, everybody knows they've got to do them, but they still get them wrong. Data. Data, that's the glue in the middle that, that holds all of this together. And without that data, the rest of it's going to be very, very, very difficult. You need to make sure there's one owner, somebody in charge of this. And finally, I've seen it so many times this year, you've got to keep the stage from getting out, because once the stage gets out, and starts to cannibalize your existing visibility, your benchmarking is going to be out the window. So, involve SEO from the start. These sort of projects, migration projects, build projects, are planned way, way in advance. So it's essential that you get the SEO people right in on day one. Not a week later, not two weeks later, not six months later, but right at the very start. You know, if you like, spread out that project on a huge sheet of paper or on the wall and put all the key milestones down and get the SEO team and ask them, where do you need to be involved? What do you need to see? What are you expecting? And then just plug them into every single phase of that build. You have to have somebody who's experienced in migrations as well. Don't, don't just do this for the first time. And you've got to allow that person to build relationships. Now, we've got that then. So we're in on day one. And I could be in on day one on my project, ignoring the migratory myth, forgetting what the people down the pub say. So I'm in on day one and I'm in charge. So that's fantastic. I know at the back of my mind we've got to do our redirects and mapping. And so many people leave this till right at the very end and make an absolute hash of it. So you've got to get a list of every single one of your URLs. And I don't want to teach you to suck eggs, but list out all of those URLs. Get the HTML title, the header one, the meta description. Now's the time, if you're in early enough, to actually look at the theming, your current theming. Can we improve it? Have we got loads of content and pages that are actually really, really similar, potentially causing conflict, as you'll see soon? Okay, it's time to get those sorted out. And you've got to thoroughly test. So as you're migrating, as you're 301-ing from one URL to a similar URL or to another level up, what happens? What happens if you get a little lazy Here's an example. Just imagine for a moment, waking up, thinking, I haven't looked in Search Console for a while. I'll have a little look, cheer myself up over a coffee. Imagine waking up to a steady rise in soft 404s. Not that that's the kind of thing that's gonna absolutely ruin your day. But it's not gonna ruin your day as much as this, which is the same company, the same multi-billion pound global organization who had that steady rise in soft 404s. Here's their visibility. Good grief. Okay, so, fell off a cliff. Fantastic positions for really high profile search terms. And then, so, you walk into the office, it's the 1st of April. You walk in and somebody presents you with that. So, you probably collapse, laying on the floor, you know, like pretending to faint, just looking around with one eye, so everyone's left the room, and then, and, then, and then you notice the calendar, and the calendar says 1st of April, so you stand up thinking, oh, okay, that's much better. 1st of April, that's fine. And bear in mind, this is a genuine chart from a genuine business. And then you suddenly realize as your revenues are taking a massive dive, as these will have done, 
you fall back on the floor again. And then you're there with one eye open again, waiting for everyone to leave the room. And then, then you remember. You go back to the pub and you remember your friends from the pub. And they said this was happen. So that's fine. So I can get up again because this is typical. This is typical. That's what I'm thinking. You know what I'm doing? I'm adding fuel to the fire of the self-fulfilling migratory prophecy. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to take that experience to my next one. But it doesn't have to be that way. This was a failure to redirect effectively. Here's what they did. They got their 301 list out and started it really well. Okay. And then we're left with a whole bunch of URLs that they weren't sure what to do with. So what do you do if you're not really sure what to do with something? You can imagine in a meeting, well, I better not do anything permanent. Let's do something temporary. Okay. Oh, yeah, 302 redirects. Let's 302 them. Where should we 302 them? Oh, let's 302 them to the home page. That's good, isn't it? That'll... And then we'll do something about them later. But nothing happened later. So they were still indexed, and that caused those soft 404s, those massive drops in traffic, and equivalent drops in revenue as well. And that happened early this year. They can, of course, fix it. So they need to go back and get those URLs, but it's going to take time to come out the other side. And, and, and something that will help them with that is data. And I mentioned data is the glue in all the middle of this, because data is brilliant. And you guys, I'm sure you love data as much as I do, you get really excited about it, wake up in the night thinking about data and charts, you have them all over your fridge. I know you do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But data is critical in a migration beforehand. Let's benchmark where we are. We need to know where we are before we need to know where we're going to. And also, critically, with data, we need to eliminate, detect and eliminate the internal conflict that we're almost certainly going to be suffering from. And I'm sure most of you, to some extent, suffer from internal conflict or cannibalization. And data will help you to resolve that, daily data. Um, because I guarantee one thing, if you're suffering from internal conflict, your platform is rickety, you've got a dodgy old CMS, your site is slightly inaccessible, as you go from one old world into the new world, you're going to take that with you, and that increased accessibility will make your internal conflict even worse. So fix it now. And you need to monitor the migration window. The wonderful migration window, that moment when you sweat from when you flick the switch to the seven to ten days afterwards. I'm going to show you an example, a couple of examples of that migration window. Okay. Imagine you were number one for best Bollywood movies. This business was number one. They were migrating. This was a, this was a domain migration. So potentially hazardous. It's a really popular term. So, really, so, so, so what do you think happened? Okay. They did things right, they got SEO in the start, they did their 301s. SEO team was involved right from day one. So let me introduce to you something you will love to see if you're migrating. That's the straight switch, and there it is. Beautiful, poetic, print that out, stick it on your fridge, go and have a lie down or even a beer, because that's the kind of thing you want to see from a good migration. One out, old one out, new domain in. Perfect, no loss of visibility. Here's another one. What do we call this one? Brief coexistence. And these are beautiful. So we got, we're pushing somebody else off page one there. Brief coexistence, we've got the new URL in, and it sits just under the old one. This is really, really common, but don't worry if that drops out occasionally and comes back in, okay? That's common. And then it takes over the position of the old URL. And I mentioned things can get better, and what could be better than a really good uplift? So in this, in, in this situation, and this was new action movies, we detected internal conflict. There's a lot of conflict there because they didn't have a hub page. So we resolved the conflict, identified the conflicting URLs, created a hub page, and they immediately had a 30 position uplift, and then went on to page one. And here's another really good uplift as well. And this one went on to page one as well. That was new family movies. That's a classic glass ceiling, a glass ceiling caused by internal conflict. See, I'm not supposed to talk about internal conflict. I've talked about it too much about Brian SEO, but I had to get it in there, so that's my excuse. Um, absolutely worked absolutely brilliantly. You need to make sure that this project has an owner, one owner. But more than that, there are three things you need to give to this owner of the project. You need to give them responsibility, involvement, and empowerment. 
Because unless you empower them to make and enforce decisions, unless they are responsible and they're next on the line, this is not going to work in addition to those other things. And finally, you've got, you've got to keep the stage from getting out. I've seen stages out in the wild, sounds strange, but out in the wild for a couple of months before migrations, cannibalizing existing, existing uh, pages. And this is going to make a mess of your benchmarking. Okay? And don't forget, you know, robots.txt only prevents crawling and not indexing, so there are three other methods that you can use there. Um, I recommend IP whitelisting. So, that's that one. And finally, in summary, and I've just run out of time, um, just remember, SEO is not the icing on the cake. We don't have magic powers, okay? You've got to get involved right from the very start, okay? You need expert help, and just remember, dispel that migratory myth. This is an amazing opportunity to come out the other side in a better place, with a better website, with better visibility, and greater traffic and revenues as well. And I would say that if you're going through a migration, download this deck and explain these are multi-billion pound businesses that have recently got this wrong because they forgot about one of these. Um, and if you want a custom example, then come and find me on a stand or something outside and I can give you some customized data. So, thanks for your time.